Hey everybody, it's your Sam again, and I'm here with yet another video. So I kind of want to do a Scribbler unboxing. I thought I had two to do, but it looks like I only have the one, so I didn't fall as far behind as I thought I did. So yay. <laughs> and towards the end of the video, I kind of want to go over my plans for the videos for the rest of the month and things like that. Here we go. I did go ahead and get all the little orange thingies, the packing uh, crunchies out of the box just so I wouldn't have to do that on camera. But other than that, that's pretty much basically all I've done with the Scribbler box for the month of uh, August. So I'm a little bit behind, but, but not really. <laughs> <laughs> and as always we get a little postcard that has a writing contest from Scribbler and that's usually the very top thing out of the box. This one is at the end of your book after that final resolution what do you want readers to feel? So their favorite submission will receive a bonus gift and the entries close on the 17th of this month. So that's really neat. Just um, because I know I'm not going to do the competition kind of thing. So for I'm No Hero, what I want my readers to feel is kind of like a sense of I can do this. I can take on whatever life throws at me and I can do this. That's kind of what I want my readers to feel at the end of I'm No Hero because Nadasha has anxiety, she has a little bit of PTSD, and by the end of the book she's going to have more PTSD and it's going to carry on into book two and a little bit into book three. And the readers will hopefully be able to follow through with that feeling and with that sense of almost hopelessness. But towards the end of each book there should also be a sense of I can do this. If she can do it, I can do it. Even though it's a very much a fantasy novel, I still want readers to feel that. And I also want readers to feel a inclusion. I want them to feel like the world can come together and work and make the world a better place. So yeah, that's kind of what I want my readers to feel at the end of I'm no hero. As far as the ninja stories, I want them to feel joy. I want them to feel like, you know, a little lighter and that they have laughed during the book, during the short stories. So that's what I want them to feel after the ninja stories. Just a sense of comedic relief, I guess. <laughs> anyway, Going further into the Scribbler box, we have our snack, Gary Poppins Whole Grain and Small Batch Popcorn. It is kettle corn. It's handcrafted, and that is just amazing. I want you to look at that. Gary Poppins. <laughs> so that is awesome. Only 150 calories. No cholesterol. There's still a bit of sodium in it, but it's popcorn. Of course, there's going to be sodium in it. 25 grams of carbs and 2 grams of protein. Awesome. Okay, so we got some popcorn to try out. <laughs> and next is Yubi. You buy Yubi Gives. You buy Yubi Gives, yep. It's four ballpoint pens. They look kind of like highlighters, but that's really neat. Here we go. For every UB item you buy, a UB item will be donated to a child in need in this country. That is amazing. I'm going to have to look up this company and see what else they have. So we can do some purchases and then uh, go from there. Next up, we have a notepad. Nice. It's a good day to write. It's a pretty hefty notepad. There we go. You probably can't tell. Well, you kind of can maybe with this 
light and everything, but it's got a um, bullet, uh, yeah, like a bullet journal style paper. It's pretty cool. And we also have the Inside Look publishing process. So this is literally figurative. So this is about after you've potentially hooked an agent and you need to write your full synopsis. So that's pretty awesome. And then of course it has inside your box um, on the back there. And then we got a sticker. Behold the first draft. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And we've got the Scribbler Passport, which is resolutions this time. Nice. So learn about writing resolutions. You'll never know how it ends if you don't start. All right. And then we also have the invitation to the exclusive ch chat. And it's with Daniel Wilcox. International best-selling author with experience in many different areas of storytelling. He's an author coach, part of a digital story studio, Hawk and Cleaver, co-founder of the fiction podcast, The Other Stories, CEO of horror imprint, Devil's Rock Publishing, and the co-host of the Next Level Authors podcast. Daniel has written 40 plus books in his five years for himself and on behalf of ghostwriting clients. His work includes Sins of Smoke, the When Winter Comes series, and The Other Side, a horror anthology. Awesome. That might be interesting. And we've got the um, signature plate for our book. The Worlds We Whisper. Author uh, From the author of Honeysuckle Season, Mary Ellen Taylor. So there's that. As a hospice nurse, Zara Mitchell has already seen more death than most people will experience in a lifetime. Of course, it's going to be about death because such is my life here recently. Um, so when her older sister asks her to help care for their ailing grandmother, Zara agrees despite strained family relationships. Though pale and tired, Nona has lost none of her sharp mind. She's She's fixated on finding something long forgotten, and she immediately puts Zara to work cleaning out the attic. Unexpectedly, amid the tedium of sifting through knickknacks and heirlooms, Zara also reconnects with a man she's attracted to, but whose complicated past makes romance seem impossible. But when Zara finds what Nana was looking for, a wooden chest, an emerald brooch, a leather-bound journal... As she immerses herself in stories of heroism and loss set against the backdrop of war-torn Italy in 1943, Zara finds answers to questions she didn't know she had, and they change everything she thinks she knows about love, regret, and seizing the day. Interesting. Probably not going to read that too soon. <laughs> Nothing against the author or a scribbler, it's just, yeah, not going to be a good time. Hey, yeah, that is the Scribbler box. Let's put everything back in here except for the popcorn. <laughs> but yeah. So, next part of this video is the plans that I have for upcoming videos. I do have an anniversary coming up. It's the anniversary of mine and my husband's wedding. So, yay. Uh, and on that, I'm going to probably try to do like my favorite romantic characters or even the romantic characters that I'm writing currently and do a little video on that <clears throat> just to kind of celebrate it. That'll probably go out on the 16th. And then I kind of want to do like a little bit of a progress update now that I'm kind of slowly getting back into things and we're... I'm editing a little bit again. I've edited about two chapters this month, which is nothing compared to what I used to be able to do, but it is something. I'm I'm building back up. So yeah, 
and then I also want to do like maybe some tropes um romantic tropes kind of thing and you know kind of celebrating the anniversary again and I might delve into a little bit of writing while being depressed or writing while going through something terrible that happens to you or a life-changing event just to try to help y'all out there who might be going through the same thing or will be going through the same thing. I hope you don't, but it is what it is. It is life. It happens every now and then. And if I can help y'all work through it, then that's, that's good enough for me because you were there for me. Um, y'all commented on my video and made me feel better about, uh, things about not being around and taking time better about me taking time for myself. So that is very much appreciated. I want to thank you for commenting and reaching out to me. Um, those of you that did, and I, I really appreciate it. It really helped me out a lot, even though I might not have had the capacity to reach back out to you and, and, and answer you or something like that. I think I managed to like all the comments maybe, I hope, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it is what it is. And that is about it. I'm still building up my schedule again. I'm still working towards getting faster at editing like I was and actually picking up more editing hours and more writing hours kind of thing, you know, trying to work my brain back into being creative again. And it's, it's a process and it's, it's there. <laughs> I feel like I'm kind of like scratching the surface of, of, of the bucket of, you know, the bucket of creativity and it's, it's almost there, but it's not quite there. But you know, one of these days I'll delve right back into it and be in the midst of it again. And I will be well with the world. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching. Thank you for being there for me and I will see you in my next video.